Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be doing a review of Saving Mars by Sidney Swanson. Uh, this is the first book in the Saving Mars series, which I was very kindly sent by the author for review. She signed that for me. It says, For the Love of Mars. Uh, Sidney Swanson is the author of the Ripple Trilogy, which is available as an ebook series or a physical book series. I reviewed um, the first book in, on my channel quite some time ago, and I'll put a link to that uh, review down below. Uh, so this is her Saving Mars series. It's sort of a YA sci-fi slash dystopian series, and it follows this young girl here. She's a 17-year-old pilot in training by the name of Jessamine Jarda, but she goes by the name of Jess. And she's been living on a Mars colony with her parents and her older brother, Ethan. Now, this colony was part of uh, the Mars Project, which was set up by the Terran government on Earth to kind of see if they could colonize uh, further planets within the galaxy. And for about two centuries, this project had been going on, and eventually problems on Earth with pollution and poverty and starvation kind of forces the government to decide that they can no longer sustain this project and they need to shut it down and bring the people back. But this project's been going for like two centuries. There have been generations of, of people living on Mars who now consider Mars their home. Some people have returned to Earth, but others have decided that there's no way they're leaving. Mars is their home. And this causes a lot of conflict between the Terran and Mars government. And fighting starts, they, they cut off supplies, and eventually the two sides decide to form a no-contact agreement, which means each, each group will stay to their own planet and leave each other alone, and if that contract is broken, it could lead to war. Now, since that contract uh, was agreed upon, about a century has passed, and the people on Mars have been sort of living off the stockpile of supplies and, and food ration bars that they've been uh, living on. Um, from the original project, with kind of supplemented with occasional raids, you know, unbeknownst to the Terran government, back to Earth to, to kind of trade on the black market for food. Uh, Jess's grandfather himself was one of these Mars raiders. He was a pilot. And this is something that Jess has been training for since she can remember. She's She wants to be like her grandfather and be a Mars raider, and knows that sometime in probably the near future, um, they'll need to go and restock these supplies. But this is sort of pushed forward when an accident occurs on Mars and wipes out almost 90% of their food supplies. And now the government has to force a raid very soon uh, or the people will starve. This is also complicated by things you find out with, of course, the rotation of the planets around the sun between Earth and Mars. They have to plan it at a certain time when the two planets are as close as possible to make this raid, you know, uh, you know to be able to do this raid. Otherwise... They won't have enough fuel to reach the planet and things like that. So they've only got about six weeks. Now, the government decides one of the people going on this raid is going to be her brother, Ethan. Uh, Ethan is sort of this alter-abled young man. He's a bit of a genius. I think there's some possibly autistic savant thing going on there. He's, he's very, very smart. He's created a lot, of, um, a lot of inventions that the government uses, and he's won awards and things like that. But there's this other side to him where he suffers this very debilitating claustrophobia. It can almost shut them down to like this catatonic state. And there only seems to be one person that can either prevent it or kind of sidetrack it from happening or to actually draw him out if he goes too deep. And that's his sister, Jess. Um, she can recognize the signs when things are going and, and kind of distract him um, from shutting down. And this couple with her abilities as a pilot, even though she's only a pilot in training, she has chosen the to pilot one of the ships on this mission. Um, she's very worried about her brother because he's going to be in this confined capsule, you know, flying to a planet for, you know, it's quite a long trip. So it's, there's many challenges they face. There's lots of danger. There's lots of action along the way. Uh, it's 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 very a very dangerous trip. So a lot weighing on a 17 year old uh, girl as a pilot of one of these ships. Um, when we uh, encounter Earth, we learn about. This really interesting dystopian society. Now, I don't want to go into detail about it because to me it was a total surprise. I thought this book was like a straight sci-fi story, yet Earth has this, like I said, this very disturbing, creepy kind of dystopian thing happening on there that I, I didn't know it was going to be there. It was like right out of the blue. And it just, it could be a book in its own. I mean, she, Sydney creates this amazing world there that I was so intrigued by. It was so unique. And uh, we have this evil kind of woman running the government. And she reminds me a lot of, like, the Queen from the Lunar Chronicles, if you've read that, in Cinder. Um, it, it made me think of that particular character a lot. Um, I, I really love 
everything that took place on Earth as well as everything that took place up in space and on Mars. Just wonderful world building on both locations. Um, she gives us a real insight on what life is like on Mars. You have your, you know, your less gravity, uh, less oxygen, how they have to move about, how they have to survive and ration, and then on Earth, what it's like for people from Mars walking on Earth. Now you've got this increased gravity and how it affects them, and everything is just really well detailed and described. And like I said, the societies on both are uh, really interesting in the whole idea of this um, kind of potential war that could take place between these two planets. Um, on the planet of Earth, we also meet a young man named Pavel. He's the nephew of the woman running the government. Uh, he plays a very important part um, towards the middle and end of this particular book and into the sequel. Um, I'll have to see what more happens next. I haven't read too much into the second book yet. But, um, yeah, overall, it was a very, it's a very dangerous mission. She faces a lot of challenges. And ultimately, for a 17-year-old, she has some very difficult decisions to make within this story. Um, I like this character of Jess. I liked her from the very first. Um, I, I could tell something about Sydney's writing that just draws me in. Her characters are very well developed, very likable. She, this particular girl is like, like I said, she's 17, she's headstrong, she's brave, she kind of flies by her gut, not always her head, makes decisions the same way, and she has to learn to kind of use this more often, and that's her challenges. Uh, she doesn't always do things by the rule book, and it does often get her into trouble. <laughs> Uh, even though her intentions are, are well met. I liked her interactions with her brother. Her brother Ethan's a very interesting character as well. Um, perhaps these uh, difficulties, difficulties that he has. Um, it's interesting when you hear him speak. He's, he's almost, it's almost like a monotone, emotionless voice. If you picture, say, if you've watched the Star Trek The Next Generation and the character Data, who's sort of this cyborg-type character, um, his voice kind of comes out that way. But as you're reading it, you can sense the emotion that's sort of buried deep within him. The same emotions that Jess is able to pick up on. And you can, I love the interactions between the two characters. They were very touching at times. Um, yeah, uh, lots of action, lots of suspense, a little bit of romance just creeping in towards the end of the book. Nothing heavy handed, but uh, the action sequences, the world building, the characters. I love everything about this book. If I could give it a 10 out of 5, you know, I would. Uh, I was about halfway through this when I decided I was going to be needing book two as soon as I finished this one. So I ordered it right away, and literally within a few days of finishing this one, the sequel arrived. So I was so happy. That's Defying Mars, and I've already started reading that one. And um, this one has such an amazing cliffhanger, you're going to want to have book two ready to go. So I highly recommend this series. It was very enjoyable. I also recommend the Ripple series that she wrote prior to this one. Um, if you're looking for, if you like sci-fi, if you like dystopian, just like a very well-written book, very well uh, action and characters. I highly recommend this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it and hope you decide to pick up the series. Bye-bye.